you know, and seeing my mum on her knees washing my feet, that was the moment. Probably the most humiliating moment in my life, one of them anyway. And it was seeing my mum doing that, washing my feet. I was like, okay, something's got to change here. Otherwise, you're just gonna you're just gonna die. Mike, how did you find Carnivore? Well, Carnivore for me came late later in my in my weight loss journey, uh, my health turnaround, I guess. Um, to to tell you how I find I found Carnivore, I guess I need to just kind of rewind a little bit and put it into some context as far as where I came from. So due to, and again, short, long story, squash down short, due to anxiety, the usual suspects, anxiety, depression, life taking you in places you didn't expect it. Um, I ended up getting myself into a bit of a state. Um, I wasn't leaving my house. I was staying inside, curtains closed in the dark. I was ordering my food to my door through takeaway services. And I was eating probably two to three takeaways a day. An example of an evening meal, let's just say a pizza delivery service. I would get an XXL pizza, which would be as wide as the front door that comes through my house. I'd have to turn it sideways to get it through the door. I'd eat that with wings, garlic bread, two liters of Coke, and wash that all down with a big pot of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And that was just dinner. If prior to that, I would have had maybe a Subway for lunch and then possibly McDonald's breakfast, including like three or four Egg McMuffins. I mean, I was going in on takeaway food in quite a big way. <laughs> it was really bad. And the thing is, I was living the life of all those sugar crashes that you hit from those high processed foods. I was, I was eating in the morning, crashing to sleep for two hours, waking up, eating, crashing to sleep for two hours, waking up, eating again crashing. So on and off throughout the day, I was crashing with my sleep schedule. My weight in the process of this over the course of a two year period went up to 435 pounds. That was my, that was my highest weight that I hit. It was 32 stone in stone weight and the highest I've ever been in my life. And that came with its own problems as well. I wasn't able to walk more than a hundred yards without being an excru excruciating back pain. Many times I was outside having to do some errands and have it collapse into the ground, needing assistance to get back up because I could barely walk. The pain would hit the back of my, my lower back and shoot down my legs. And it was almost like my whole bottom half of my body would just shut down. Um, as, uh, beyond the back pain, sleep apnea. I was waking up during the night three, four times a night with sleep apnea, snoring heavily acid reflux. I'd lay in bed and I'd have acid fly up my throat. I'd be in the bathroom heaving at three in the morning, coughing up acid in the sink. It was horrible. I'd have excruciating stomach pain, bad constipation. Um, I was, it was just a real bad time for me in, in that sense of it. The stomach gut problems I was having was really bad. Um, and then the, the other issue that, start, that also came along was edema in my legs. My right leg swole four times to the size of my left leg. My calf was a state. It was just a mess. I not only did my full right leg completely swell up, it looked like an elephant's leg. I had psoriasis all form on the back of my calves, all down to the side of my feet. I was in a really bad way. I was only at the age of 30, 35, 36. And I was heading for a, for a for the grave. That's where I was going. Um, the box was going to be next if I'd have carried that on. And obviously my family don't want that. I don't want that. Um, so I decided to turn things around. And that, what I normally find in life in general is there normally is a breaking point where something happens where it really does hit. And then the motivation kicks in to make a change. For me, that motivation was 2022 um, Christmas. I um, was at my mum's for Christmas. I turned up for Christmas day. I had to go with trainers and no socks because I couldn't get my socks on my feet. And where I used to be at home walking around all the time with no socks on, my feet would get dirty. But because I couldn't fit in the shower, my hygiene was horrendous. I couldn't get in the shower. I couldn't wash. It was just so bad. I couldn't, just couldn't fit in. I was too big. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Uh, had to ask my elderly mother at the age of 60 to take me into the bathroom at my age and, and wash my feet, you know, and seeing my mum on her knees washing my feet, that was the moment, probably the most humiliating moment in my life. One of them anyway. 
And it was seeing my mum doing that, washing my feet. I was like, okay, something's got to change here. Otherwise, you're just gonna you're just gonna die. <laughs> like, <laughs> what what are we gonna do? Something's got to change. So, in Jan- in Jan in January of 2023, I decided to kick the habit. I started to kick the soda to start with. I didn't know what diet I was gonna do. I just decided to go and let's be healthy. Let's not eat takeaways. Let's not get soda. And through January through to um, September, not eating any takeaway foods, no Coke, no Pepsi, nothing like that. I managed to lose 100 pounds. So I went from 430 down to 330. Um, And then in September, I hit a plateau where I wasn't losing any weight. Like the whole month, I just wasn't losing anything. And I didn't really know what to do. And I I thought to myself, you know, I really could... uh, with losing this weight. I need to lose more. I'm not at my goal weight. Maybe there's something I can find out. I'll go looking online, see what I can find. And then to answer your question, <laughs> where did I find carnivore? This is when I found carnivore. I went onto YouTube and I typed in, I've hit a weight plateau. How can I lose weight? Healthy way to lose weight. And loads of people who do you do these interviews with say all the different people they've met or their first encounter with carnivore. Some of the popular ones are people like Jordan Peterson, Michaela Peterson, those kind of people, because they had the big Joe Rogan thing, didn't they? I never saw any of that. No, no. The person who I saw first was Dr. Berry. I saw his video and I watched a couple of his videos and he was talking about weight loss and did go in low carb. And low carb isn't something I've not done in my life. I've done Atkins before years and years ago, but he was talking about this in a different way and his, his enthusiasm just came across in leaps and bounds for me. I really kind of resonated with him the way he was talking. And then I started thinking to myself, there's no way you can eat all this red meat. I've been told is bad all my life and all these eggs and all this stuff and not put on a pound of like tons of weight. There's no way it's going to happen. I start looking into the comments on these videos and it's one after the other, after the other, after the other of testimonials in his comments saying, thank you. You've saved my life. And oh my God, you've saved my life. And I'm like, Maybe this has got some legs to it. Maybe it has. And he was talking about his BB and E challenge. And that's when I started. I started the BB and E challenge and we began the first 30 days and it was always going to be 30 days. And that's how it started. Congratulations. Even before you did this, like getting a hundred pounds down, Mm. you know, just giving up the takeaway. I mean, that's a significant achievement because that's just willpower, right? It was pure willpower. At first, it was really difficult because I love pizza. I do <laughs> I love pizza. Um, I, you know, I'm a pizza addict. I used to have a skyscraper of boxes in my apartment, up about six, seven foot tall of pizza boxes. In fact, I can show you something. I kept one as a memory of the old days. This is the old pizza box I used to get. And you can see the size of that. You can see the size of the pizza box. This is it's even got the little thing in it still. This is the size of the pizza <laughs> box that I would actually get a pizza and that whole thing would be full and I would itch literally eat the whole thing. What what's your weight now? You've gone from five uh, four thirty five pounds to, to what yeah. now? So right now I'm sitting at two hundred and fifty eight pounds. Like it, and, and I don't, I, I'm not quite there yet. I've, I've, I've slimmed down a lot. Like I've, I'm in clothes that I never used to be able to wear. Um, I've slimmed down a hell of a lot, but I'm 258 right now. I, I want to get down to about for my build. I like the stocky build. I, I've always been a bit stocky, so I, I want to get down to about 200, 20, or one nine between one nine five and two oh five. That's kind of where I feel like my 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 weight is comfortable at. I like being around there, so. Not not far to go. Not far to go. Um, so I started just going back to the carnivore bit. Then I started carnivore in October the on October the third, twenty twenty three. That's when I started carnivore, um, and I just done the first thirty days to see how it would be, how it would go. And it was interesting that the first the first three days I, I noticed the change after three days, and. At the time, I didn't really understand it. Now, looking back, I do understand it. It was the brain fog. For me, that was the first thing that actually cured was the brain fog. Straight away, three days in, I noticed I was more awake, more, 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 I don't know, more energetic. 
I just felt more focused in what I was doing on a day to day. Um, within the first week, I noticed I was sleeping through the night, which is something that even during the whole time that I was not eating the Coke and the drinks and the, um, you know, the pieces and things, I, I was still having the rough night's sleep. I was still getting the acid reflux. I was still getting the swollen legs. I was in hospital with all of that. Like that was still happening, but I was losing weight. But a week into carnivore, the acid reflux gone and I was sleeping through the night. Um, I recorded myself with a microphone <laughs> over the corner I was sleeping to see if I was still snoring because there's no one here to tell me if I am or not. And there was no snoring. I looked at the sound wave, the sleep pad, see if there's anything going up on it for like a six hour recording and there was no snoring. So, and I haven't snored since. So I've, it cured the snoring within a week, within a week. I've snored for years. Within a week of going on carnivore, no snoring, no acid reflux, sleeping through the night and more energy. Wow. That's a big list of positives in the first week. Um, and then as we get further into the first month, I noticed some weight loss. Um, that also came with it as well. I don't really, can't really remember exactly how much I lost in the first couple of weeks, but the first bit was water weight. So I dropped quite significantly in the first month. But I got to the end of the month and I thought this is going great. I'm going to do this for another month. We'll make this a 60 day challenge now instead of 30. So I, I made it into a 60 day challenge. And I was watching a lot more videos online, trying to get more of an understanding of how carnival works, electrolytes and all the rest of this stuff. Um, and by the time I got to the end of two months, things were really good. Now, obviously there was some side effects when I first started off. I did have upset stomach. I know a lot of people have that. It's a standard thing that you get when you start carnivore. It turned my butt into a sprinkler. I'm not even like, I know that's, that's the, that's the most politest way I can put it. There was the McDonald's incident, which basically is me going to the cafe in the morning for bacon and eggs with my mum, and then having to run into McDonald's to use the toilet two minutes after, because I drank a strong coffee after I'd eaten. And whew, like, I found out very quick that coffee straight after I eat on carnivore might not be the best combination because it does act like a bit of a laxative. Um, and I've learned that if I want a coffee, I have it a good couple of hours before I eat anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just a learning curve thing. But I, I felt so good at the end of two months, two months became three months. And again, I started on 3rd of October. We're now coming up towards the end of April. And I have been on it since then. Now I have added a couple of little things along the way, and I think it's okay to do that. I, I see it as an elimination diet. And the good thing about this is if I bring something back into my diet, I can see straight away if that's going to affect me. If it does, I can take it back out again. So one of the things I've been playing around with, and this might be a bit of a 50-50 opinion on this one, but I've been playing around with fermented, veg fermented vegetables. So things like kimchi and sauerkraut. It's not, it's not something I have every day um, because I like to do, I still do like to try and stay clean carnivore. So Today, for example, I had bacon and eggs this morning. I had some pork loin steaks this afternoon, a couple of those. And I did feel a bit peckish earlier, so I had some chicken drumsticks. But that's it for the day. And I normally eat within a window. So I've been intermittent fasting for the last three months. So between, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but 10, 10 a.m. I normally have my first meal. My last meal for the day will be around about five. And then I won't eat nothing again until the next following day around about 10 a.m. So I'm intermittent fasting. It's normally about a 16 to 18 hour fast that I do every single day. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I operate pretty efficient on that as well. Um, so yeah, right now things are good. My psoriasis is all cleaned up. I'd have no more edema. I can sit down for hours on the computer doing stuff on the PC and not have any problems with my legs. Um, my mobility is amazing. I can walk miles now without any problems, no back pain. It's completely gone. It, it, it was the weight that was causing all the problem and all the inflammation in the lower back. That's, that's where the issues were. Once the weight went, the inflammation disappeared and boom, the pain's gone. So all them things I told you about at the start here about the back, the, everything, all the symptoms, I have no symptoms now, none, everything's gone. Um, and I haven't got, I haven't got any serious conditions. I never had no serious conditions like diabetes or blood pressure or anything like that. But I feel like where I was at and what the things I was starting to get, the edema and reflux, all these other things, to me, that was going to be the beginning of bad metabolic health and start going down the road of developing those other conditions. That would have been, that would have been the path I was on. But I feel so blessed and lucky that I found not just 
Mr. Berry. Obviously, he was the first one I found, but all the other doctors and content creators that are doing it themselves, like yourself, that are here every day putting content out, telling us about how this works and stuff. I found these people and that, and I watch them every day. And I feel like, in a way, everybody, not just one person, but the whole Kikonanivore community as a whole, helped me turn my life around and save my life. Because if I never found this, where, where would I be? I don't know where I would be. So yeah, no, it, to me, it's a blessing. It's such a blessing finding this community. You've had all these improvements. You're feeling better. You're much mm. more um, mobile now. Like, what? what is it? You say you're walking miles. Like, do you mm. actually feel like getting out and walking now? Yeah, that's, that's, it's the, it's the mental. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause I spoke about anxiety and not wanting to stay, go out. The, the only way I can explain that is the way you feel when you are that anxious and that, that down and depressed is you feel like when you walk out the door, you feel like anybody that you see in your direction, anyone around you, you feel like someone's always looking at you. If you hear a laughter, that's at you. If you hear someone snigger or say something that's towards you as well. And it, that's how, that's the only way I can kind of describe it. It kind of builds up and builds up and you can't breathe and it, it feels horrible. But with the weight loss and the energy and the focus and everything that's happened while lo losing the weight and then going carnivore, now I love going out. I look forward to going out. Um, I don't, I, I, I do, I, I, I can walk now out and about and around the shops and around the mall and around the forest and around the park and now I run down the stairs of my apartment building and run back up the stairs instead of taking the lift every time. Here's something really crazy. I remember going down the stairs the beginning of last year and when I would put my foot down onto the step, my ankles were so swollen that the back of my ankle would clip the step as I was putting my feet down the stairs. That's how big my legs were. I couldn't put my feet down onto the next step without my ankle clipping the stairs. That's because they were so wide swollen and today for example i had to run downstairs to get the postman to get a package that turned up and i'm literally running down the stairs now holding onto the barn swinging around and going right down the stairs really fast and then running back up the stairs 10 flights running up the stairs back to my flat the fitness level's gone through the roof i feel i feel amazing i feel like i haven't been this fit and this slim and this healthy since my early 20s and i'm now 39 believe it or not <laughs> um the other thing as well, which I want to mention, which is, I think is also part of the, part of the focus. I feel like my brain was always telling me things like, you're not hungry. You don't want this. Don't do that. That's bad for you. But I feel like carnivore finally allowed me to hear my brain and hear the signals and understand those signals. And what I mean by that is one month after going carnivore, I quit smoking and I've been smoking since the age of 16. So I, and I would smoke about 10 to 15 a day. So I would roll my own cigarettes and I'd have 10 to 15 a day every day from the age of 16 to 38. But a month after carnivore, I noticed that my ashtray, that the cigarette ends I was putting out was getting longer and longer and longer, the amount I was putting out. And I noticed it one day when I went to empty the ashtray, I was like, wow, why comes all these cigarettes? are like still three quarters of a cigarette, each one. And then I started to realize I wasn't enjoying it. I don't like the taste. It's not making me, it's, I'm not getting pleasure out of this. It's making me feel sick. And without any Nicorette gum or vapes or any help or assistance, I just quit just like that with willpower and just stopped. I threw the lighters away, threw the ashtray away, didn't think of it. And the first couple of days I may have had some slight cravings, but then once I got past the first couple of days, done. And now I don't even think about it. So it's crazy. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> um, so how is your family feeling about this? I mean, you talked about how, it, you know, that, that moment where your mum was washing your feet, that mm. was kind of that moment for you. Like, how mm. is your mum feeling about this now? Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, my dad. I'll get to my mum. First of all, my dad. My dad um, is actually embracing it himself now. He's not gone full car. He's not gone full carnivore. He does still have some vegetables. He still has some mashed potato. He still makes his own bread, which I guess is better than the shop bought bread, which is full of ingredients that you don't even want. When he makes bread, it's just four ingredients. So okay, um, but he has reduced his carbohydrate intake a lot. He stopped eating cereals because he used to eat Kellogg's cereals. He's got rid of all those, 
And now he's sending me pictures in the morning of his bacon and eggs. <laughs> and he's, he, you know, he hasn't eaten beef for like seven years. He's now eating beef again. So he's actually seen the success I've had and he's actually embracing it. And he's made changes to his life. He's got rid of seed oils. He used to cook all his food in rapeseed oil. And he's now got rid of that and he's brought in butter and he's brought in um, some coconut oil if he needs to use any oils. But he's not using any of the seed oils now, which is really good. So that's great. My mum, on the other hand, is she's 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 seen the progress I've made. She can see it. She makes comment on it when I see her. I see her once a week and she makes comment on how well I'm doing. So she knows it's working. She can clearly see that. But she's just... I feel like she just, I don't know, it's hard to explain. She, I, I've, I can't tell her to do what I'm doing. You can never tell someone because that just doesn't go down well at all. You'll make, you, you'll, you'll lose family doing that. Um, I've tried to guide her the best I can, um, but she has a lot of bad habits. And unfortunately, she has a lot of medical conditions, which would, she'd so much benefit from doing this. But you know, she has fibromyalgia, arthritis, she has diabetes, blood pressure, She's on statins for cholesterol. I mean, she's on the works. She's got a pharmacy in her kitchen. Um, and it actually upsets me when I see her walking around and struggling, you know, because I know she's in so much pain with so much inflammation and she would benefit from this so much. And she's only in her early 60s. And it's that's definitely not too late to be changing things like this and making those massive changes. So for now, she's doing what she calls a diet, a healthy eating plan, which is her eating or stuff which I still wouldn't eat. But for now, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and hope that eventually she's going to actually come to me. When she's ready and she comes to me, I'll be there for her. But I just can't. As much as I really want to, I just want to grab her and say, come on, listen to me. You're making yourself sick. I can help you. But she just, she won't. And that is really heartbreaking when you see someone you love so much who you know, you know they could fix their problems just like this. They just got to listen to you and make some changes and they, and they don't. And you, you know, they're just going to get more and more ill and it kind of, it gets upset, it upsets me <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, no, it's, 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 um, it's heartbreaking. Um, I just hope for the day where she comes up to me and says, okay, okay, I can't take this anymore. What do I do? How do I fix this? And then I can help her. You know, I send her videos of, of, doctors, you know, I send a Dr. Berry's videos, I send a Chafee's videos, all the people that I wanted to watch, but I know, I know she's not watching them and it's just, it's just, it's just frustrating. Um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully one day she will ask, but for now I just need to be patient. For you, where does this go? Like, is this a, a, a mm. kind of all for life thing for you? Well, it started off as a diet, started off as a challenge. It's, it's not a diet or a challenge anymore for me. It's a lifestyle change. It's, I, I'm not on the carnivore diet. I'm on the carnivore lifestyle. I eat a full animal-based diet. And yeah, I have a couple of little things here and there. I have some green olives. You know, I have a little bit of kimchi here and there. I might chuck a little bit of sauerkraut on the side of my plate. I do that every now and then. And it's only it's sparingly. For the most part, 99 And when I say 99%, there's so many people that say, I'm 99% carnivore and that 1% is cookies. That 1% is cakes. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's something they should not be eating and they wonder why they don't have progress. It's, you know, I don't eat much. I don't eat any cheese. I tried cheese because I know you can eat dairy on the uh, carnivore, carnivore lifestyle, but cheese for me doesn't make me put on weight. It just stalls weight loss for me. So I just try and avoid cheese and most dairy, to be honest with you. If I fancy dairy, if I want a treat, I might have a little bottle of kefir. Which is, which is like um, it's like cultured yogurt basically, um, but I don't have that very often either. Because even that, if I have that, which is has got carbohydrates in it, and even the sauerkraut and stuff, sometimes if I have that, I do feel a little bit bloated. Like it does make me feel a little bit bloated when I have that. So really, I know I shouldn't. It's just more of a case of it's the lesser of two evils. If I just have a little bit of kimchi. I like that flavor. It's nice. It tastes good. Okay. It's not really something I should be eating, but it, it gets me through. It helps me get through. I'd rather have a little bit of kimchi than a donut. Do you know what I mean? So, but as far as where it goes from here, I just want to continue the journey, continue what I'm doing. I'm already back to really good health physically and mentally. I'm already 
feeling really good as far as the weight loss. My confidence has come back in spades. I'm still a really young lad. I want to get out there and enjoy life and travel and do things. And now I'm now I'm at a much more smaller size. I can buy clothes in stores rather than having to order online from special extra, 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 extra large places. And I can actually go out and enjoy life and be a part of society again. And again, yes, you can lose weight by just cutting out processed food. And I know you see all these things on YouTube about carnivores fighting with vegans and all the rest of it. You have that stuff going all the time. I see your posts about vegans sometimes makes me laugh. Um, but honestly, I, th- I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that carnivores the way I'm not here to tell you that veganism is the way I'm telling you that processed food is not the way that's what we know for a fact. I can't tell you whether veganism or carnivores better than better one or the other, because no one's really done studies for this. They won't because there's too many people that will lose money if they've done the studies for this. So those studies were going to, they're going to come through, but this in slow dribs and drabs. No, what, what I wanted to just say was what we know for a fact is processed food is that is evil. Sugar is the enemy as far as I can see it. And until people start changing the way they eat and stop eating things like, I don't know, McDonald's, for example, all this bad stuff that's just making our population sick. I'm not going to go through the history of it all because everybody knows the history of it, you know, Ansel Keys and all this stuff. Like everyone knows all this stuff. Um, but it's funny because if you look at a photograph from the 1970s in America, for example, like of people walking around town, they're all slim men, slim women looking great and healthy. And then you look at the same photo now in 2024 and it's full of ob- like obese people and fat people and people that are sick. And so clearly something's changed in the last 50 years. And it, I think losing the processed food, Going onto whole foods is where everybody should start. Even if somebody doesn't go carnivore straight off the bat, just eating more whole foods, vegetables, red meat, any meat, any kind of meat and vegetables and just whole stuff. Ingredients. Do it yourself at home. Cook more. Learn to cook. That's my advice for anyone out there that's thinking, oh, how can I be more healthy? Start small. Make small steps. Make small changes. That's what I did. I made small changes. I cut out processed food. I'd done that for nine months. I lost weight. And then I looked at how I can optimize that diet and get even more efficient. And for me, carnival works because you, know, you ain't never going to put a ribeye steak in front of me and me say, oh no, I don't fancy that. Because I don't, people say to me, don't you get bored of eating just me? Uh, have you even tried a, a one a, a one inch thick ribeye from the farm and had it on your plate, medium rare with a sprinkle of sea salt? You can't get bored of that. It's it's yummy. So yeah, yeah. Well, how uh, maybe to change the word around a little bit? Mm. If, if someone was to say, rather than boring, if someone was to say, um, monotonous. Mm. How how do you get over the monotony of it? I add some variety to my carnival diet. You can still do variety on a carnival diet. Um, you don't need to have ground beef. You don't need to have ground beef and, and ribeyes all the time. As much as Honestly, out of all the carnivore foods, those are what I enjoy the most. I always feel the most, the most satiety when I have red meat. But it does get boring. Even for me, it gets boring having it all the time. Not that I wouldn't enjoy it, because I do, but it does get boring. So what I do to mix things up is I have some salmon. I get wild-caught salmon. So some mornings, instead of having bacon and eggs, I'll have salmon and eggs. Um, I, get chick- I do have some chicken. The chicken's quite lean, but I always get it with the skin on. And I do add some butter if I want to increase the fat a little bit when I'm having that. Um, I like, la- you know, I have some lamb as well. I don't try and stay away from sausages because sausages are a bit sus. You never know what's in them. Um, it can- yeah, I try and stay away from sausages a little bit. Uh, one of my favorites is pork belly. I'm becoming a pork belly master. Um, although once I did cook pork belly and take the casserole dish out of the oven, and it slipped out the mitt-, mitt and smashed all over the floor. That was a, a disaster. I did still pick it up and wash it and eat it though, so it's okay. The, the two second rule applied. Um, but yeah, no, I, I literally like to mix things up. I like seafood. I like shrimp. Um, so yeah, I'll have some a little surf and turf, bit of shrimp with a steak or shrimp with some lamb or pork. So basically, I just mix things up. I try and explore all the different things you can eat within the within the carnivore space, and that for me works. It gives me enough variety to. And look forward to the next day's meal. 
if people want to reach out to you, Mike, um, how how can they get in touch? Do you have a, a YouTube or a, a, an Instagram or something? Yeah, I've got I've got um I've got the YouTube. It's just down below, but it's not really a carnivore channel. Um, I have posted a couple of updates with what I do, and I do sometimes post like a grocery haul, just showing what I've got and how I've managed to. Actually, what I've, one of the cool things I've done is been able to show people how I've gone from spending like a hundred pound a week to getting it down to like 50 pounds a week. Because that's another thing that people do say to you when you say you're on a carnivore diet, they say, well, that's going to be really expensive eating like that, eating all that meat. Um, and yeah, when I first started, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was buying all the top ribeye steaks and everything and the bill was coming in really expensive. But since I've got more uh, experience over the last six months of what I'm doing, now I will buy a lot more cheaper ground beef. And the funny thing is the supermarkets haven't caught on, cottoned on. When you go into a supermarket, all the lean mints is going to be like six, six pounds a pound or would be like $6 a pound or something. It's expensive. But then the, the meat that's got the more fat in it, the 80, 20 is like two pounds, two pounds a pound. So my stuff that I want with the better fat ratio is actually more cost effective. So I'll grab a bunch of that. And I get like one or two steaks a week now as a treat. And then I mostly build up my carnivore diet now over the course of the week with, with the ground beef and then maybe a bit of chicken, some prawns. And that pretty much does it. Some bacon, of course, and eggs. Eggs are the only thing I do spend a bit extra for because I do believe there is a big significant difference between pasture raised eggs and just battery hen um, standard eggs. Um, I like, I like, the, I don't like the eggs that are, the chickens have been force fed loads of grain. I like the ones where they're going kind of walking around eating the bugs and crickets and things. And it's more of an, more nutrients in that egg, I think. So you pay, you pay for a little bit more for the organic ones. Um, but anyway, yeah, sorry. I went off, I went off on a segue again. So yeah, no, um, I digress. You can contact me on at Worthy Prince. I do have a channel over there on YouTube, which is going really well. We're just almost about to hit 80,000 subs on my subscribe on my YouTube channel, which is thanks, which is kind of cool, but mostly gaming. Yeah, it's mostly gaming, uh, but I do do the occasional carnivore updates. So if anyone wants to pop over and say hello, they're more than welcome to. Nice. Um, well, Mike, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate your time. Oh, no worries. I haven't got a dramatic, it's not a dramatic, dramatic story. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm one of the more younger people I think I've seen on the testimonials. I'm not saying every all you guys out there are old. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just I just want to say that even the younger generation could take advantage of this. And I think it's really important that we have a voice and we tell people about our successes. I think what you're doing is fantastic with all these testimonials, because in a world where there's no major study, which you can hold up and say, you're wrong. You need to eat like I'm eating because this is how you get rid of all your health issues. You're doing this and you're giving everyone a voice and you're making it so that they have to listen. I love it. I think it's great. I think what you're doing is fantastic. And when I saw you wanted help on here to do the testimonial, I had to just come and give you a quick rundown on how my life's been over the last couple of years. It's changed significantly and I have a carnivore to thank for it. So yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it.